everyone. Welcome back. To it's Weekly Daily Wednesday. We sit back, relax, take the hello, week hello. break. Maybe talk about some of the stranger things going on in the world of Linux, technology, open source, all the other fun stuff. I'm Vin Stone, joined every week by Jill Bryant and Pedro Mateus. And, uh, hello. Everyone watching <laughs> us live. Thanks for doing that. And come say hi. Yay. Speaking of live, we got a new show suggestion bot to replace the old one that Jordan it's like, please get this thing off of my server. I don't trust it, and I can't package it. <laughs> it's unmaintained. Oh, my God. <laughs> right. So if you want to suggest show titles this week, Bang Suggest. That's all it is. It used to be, you know, Bang actual Bang S. I said it wrong, too. It's going to take yes, a Yes, it's Bang S. <laughs> it's not the old one. It's just Bang yes. S now. <laughs> bang it just S. just have it. It'll get done. But um, a lot of things going on. I was talking in the pre-show with Pedro. I was like, hey, you know what? I think we can get a Chromebook. And <laughs> two th- well, one thing. I felt one that wasn't that one Acer Chromebook that was really the only one that was available forever with the stupid high screen, which was great mm-hmm. before, but it had underpowered hardware. So it was a slideshow. Lenovo makes one, apparently. And I'm not going to tell you about it exactly what it is because I don't want everyone to run out and buy one, but it's got a detachable <laughs> keyboard. So I can, you know, open it up, take it out of the box, throw the keyboard away, and I uh, get a little Chrome tablet. I'm, I think I'm going to be down on that. I think I am. Yeah. Also, the hipster sound card, PCI sound card that we're currently <laughs> using is up for patrons. Uh, if you want to go take a look at it, but it's not the final video. I like to put it out and like, hey, if there's anything glaringly wrong in here or something, you have some suggestions. Let me know. That'll probably go out Friday for everyone, and I'll push it out to YouTube. And uh, let's see. Oh, cheap 10 gig. That's another thing I'm working on because I want to see. You know, everybody's done these videos, and um, but we're going to be doing it here in the studio. I want to see if I can take a $12 fiber card and pair it with a $7 transceiver for 10 gig. Mm. Hmm? That might okay. be interesting. We'll see if it's going to work in real life. These are solar flare cards, and uh, I don't have much experience with this particular brand. So getting these up and Linuxing um, might be an adventure. It might not. More than likely, you just plug it in. It's going to be gone. <laughs> oh, <to> go. okay. <laughs> well, I was I was genuinely like a little bit worried because these are <laughs> Finstar transceivers. Oh, shrug emoji. <laughs> um, <laughs> The amount of faith I have in these is I, I plugged it in uh, one of these into the switch and it's like then I smelt it to see if it was <laughs> oh <laughs> is that burning sensation? Yeah. But I pulled up temp sensors on them and they're all running reasonably well, so we'll find out. That's going to be coming down the line. What's new with you, Joe? Oh. Well, I'm excited. I'm I'm organizing our next Linux Chicks Los Angeles online Jitsi meetup, which is always a lot Very of fun. Nice. So we're going to start going to a regular schedule of once a month, which is really awesome. There is light at the end of the tunnel with this pandemic, so I'm looking forward to being an IRL <laughs> soon. <laughs> Pedro, you built a calculator. I did. Uh, yeah, actually he did. did. I've been uh, searching <laughs> high and low for different like uh, soldering kits that you know just put together myself. How many plastic trees did you have to kill? Uh, oh. I don't know, but uh, <laughs> they sure took their revenge on my hands because uh, <laughs> <laughs> they were sore after I put this particular acrylic case together. This is Aww. that was the most difficult bit of all of this, but yeah, no, it's uh, it's very nice. And if I do two plus two equals, it doesn't say five, so we're good. <laughs> oh, good. <okay. laughs> <laughs> <laughs> it uh it absolutely works and yeah it was uh um, it just has like a 24 pin microprocessor in there i don't remember which one exactly it takes two uh lithium cells and yeah it's it's nice it's clicky i gotta ask what everybody else is wondering mechanical switches <laughs> um <laughs> Sort of. <laughs> yes, there are individual switches and there is a oh, mechanism okay. in there, but yeah, they are very clicky. Ah. Oh, that's there a perfect kind of calculator. There's your ASMR <laughs> for today. I also put together <laughs> this thing that I still need a uh, power adapter for. It's your bow tie? A bow? Uh, <laughs> With RGB bow? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a um, hourglass. It's got the little oh, motion sensor. Okay. <laughs> you can hear it. 
That's cool. Uh, and uh, yeah, you flip it around, but yeah, it's it has the power pins, but no power just yet. And um, mm-hmm. signal um, generator. It generates signs, squares, and whatnot. Nice. Basically, whatever <laughs> soldering kit I can find. Oh, that's like three pounds. Give me. <laughs> <laughs> so I just, yeah, <laughs> I just hope law enforcement has no reason to go walk into your house at this point. <laughs> right now they're all out in the open yes but they will go in the drawer later so it will look okay <laughs> very nice that's fantastic i'm glad, <laughs> glad you get into you've gotten into it in a traditional pedro way i'm like yeah mm-hmm. this is what i do now Deal with it. <laughs> I, I like doing that and i also like the smell of hot flux so. that, that's it <laughs> there we go <laughs> I uh I realized that's exactly what my um grandfather on my mother's side he had a little workshop mm-hmm. and it smelled of flux but I didn't know what that smell was and the moment I took the soldering iron and I put it on that flux it's like oh okay <laughs> at least so, yeah. it wasn't like traumatic childhood memories <laughs> nope right. I, I really like being in his workshop look at that when when yay so let's get right into it with Solus 4.2 because it's mm-hmm. out and everyone Solus is, wait, that was last year. Anyway, Solus is still around and uh, this version, it's going to bump up default apps like Foxfire, LibreOffice, and Thunderbird. That's great. This is going to ship uh, 5, 10, 12 for your kernel. Pulse Audio 14.1 with automatic switching to HDMI being disabled by default. That's going to make some people happy. New versions of Budgie, no mate and Plasma, no option for XFCE. But, you know, I was looking at some of the screenshots. I don't think you could make, uh, to me, I should say, XFC quite as gnarly looking as uh, that. I mean, <laughs> that's a fairly basic theme, all things considered. That, 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 yeah. That's horror incarnate. What are you talking about? It, it, it has a wallpaper. Ben doesn't like it. <laughs> Just unusable. It's, it's, it couldn't be done. It couldn't be bothered. <laughs> but yeah, it is uh, the, the one thing that I look because I, I really like the uh, idea behind Solus, completely independent distro, everything built from the ground up, except for one thing. There's one big glaring issue, and that's what I hit control F for. It's like DKMS. Nothing. Mm. Okay, so uh, you're still stuck tracking whatever NVIDIA driver happens to be in the uh, in the repo. And if you install the run file, then you can't register with the KMS. So every time you update the kernel, you need to manually recompile the driver and load the module. <sighs> That's the mm-hmm. reason why I stopped using it. <laughs> I still maintain. Okay. I, can, I can respect your decision. Also think weird line in the sand <laughs> a distro not including support for dkms completely that's yeah that's weird <laughs> see i come from that weird spot from the old days of like i what oh, do, oh yeah that's thing that's neat if it works if it doesn't oh, oh, and um <laughs> <laughs> oh well i think this is actually really cool this release was getting lots of rave reviews and it's 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 quite huge with lots of improvements. And what's what's awesome is I can now recommend it to people who just want to get things done on the desktop because it's been improving, improving over time. And I love it. I have it installed on one of my laptops. And I just, I've always loved the independence of Solus. But what's also awesome is that Mesa has been upgraded to 20.3.3, which introduces support for the newer AMD GPUs, the Vulkan 1.2 API support and Ooh, yes. fixes for the latest games. Yeah. <laughs> and be, because of the updated Linux kernel, uh, newer AMD Ryzen fifth generation processors, such as the 5600X and 5950X, are now supported. Yay. Jill, so why you- are you talking about <laughs> uh, the speculative uh, <laughs> products? Because those clearly don't exist. Yeah. <laughs> hey. All right. First off, first off, I'll have you know the NVIDIA 3060 will be available out of stock on September 23rd of this month. Uh. <laughs> Wasn't it March? <laughs> I don't know. Man. It's, this is the thing. I don't pay any attention to the date. Uh, like, oh, whatever. It's coming out. One curious thing I want to say yeah. is this version of Solus removed YouTube DL because reasons. 
Ah. <laughs> I mean, it's I'm YouTube. Sure they'll put it back. <laughs> a single <laughs> file. You can easily build it. Okay. Yeah. They don't want to deal with it. All right. But <laughs> stay tuned for later in this episode when we talk about a single file with a completely different reaction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Oh, bless you. <laughs> so, so the um, Ubuntu LTS point release 20.04.2 is now available with some really huge improvements. It now includes Linux kernel 5.8, which was carried over from the 2010 release last October. And it also has Mesa 20.2.6 Linux graphics drivers. And one of the big cool things about this release is on every install of 20.04 from now on, regardless of the point release, you will get a new kernel release and new Mesa GPU drivers every six months until 2022. That's huge. That you know, Ubuntu. Will, yeah. Yeah. That will <laughs> help awesome. a lot because <laughs> that's always the things that you get stuck on with the LTSs. And yeah, having new Mesa and new kernel means you can make use of that hypothetical bit of hardware yeah. that you may or may not have acquired recently, which may or may <laughs> not exist as far as the rest of the world is considered. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the uh, this only works if you have the hardware enablement stack. But the one bit that I saw uh, of news also from um, OMG Ubuntu was that they're backporting um, Thunder Chicken 78 to the Yay. LTS, which is really nice. Thank you. Uh, I've been. I'm on KDE Neon, which is based on the uh, 2004. Well, that's that's slightly better than the criminally out out of date version that had gaping security flaws. And that they were yes, used. <laughs> <laughs> the completely unmaintained one. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> also, I now use Evolution for other reasons, but mm. uh, it's good to see. I can also say that uh, Castlevania Simon's Destiny was that. I did a video. I released it uh, yesterday. <laughs> works on the latest version of Ubuntu. That was one of the comments. I'm like, hey, I tried this and it just worked. Good. That is fantastic. So. Yay. Here's something <laughs> I've always been curious about. You know, do, do, you, do you enjoy rubbing electronic devices in the privacy <laughs> of your own home? Because hmm? <laughs> if, if you do, if you do, you <laughs> might want to consider <laughs> That's right. Our news, but I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is a desktop application for configuring. You might have guessed it. Hang on. I think we get a little. Uh, there it is right there. It, it, it's like a little what square pad that can do gesture support and all that fun stuff. I didn't even know this thing mm -hmm. existed. I was very excited. Yeah, about that's a very Apple thing is. Hey, man. <laughs> I know it's not. It's got <laughs> cables on it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's got a lightning cable on it. <laughs> but this is going to make it a lot easier to set up, configure. And if you need a handy GUI for configuring, you know, the rubs for your touche, it, it's there. It's flat up. Look at it. Done. Do. You... Okay. Maybe I need to walk that back. The I like the idea of something like that. Would I uh, use it? Oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, especially for people with laptops. That's always one of the things that Linux has fallen way behind is multi-touch gestures, like the three finger swipes and the pinches. Um, it yeah, it that's something that's barely ever worked, and very very good job on uh, getting touche uh, to mm -hmm. actually enable those. But if you are going to expose that kind of functionality to the user, thank you. Thank you for making a GUI. Thank you for bringing that bit of functionality to Linux, you know, in the yes. 21st century. <laughs> it is 2021, so very apropos. <laughs> uh, yeah. And it is nice not to have to edit XML files. <laughs> That's always yeah. a, a nice, nice thing. It's a beautiful, really beautiful <laughs> interface. And I personally don't use touchpads that much on laptops because I mostly have my mice with me. But um, for the for a screen, for a laptop a screen or, you know, just a screen on your computer at home that you can use multi-touch with, I use. <laughs> so, so I wonder I if like you could have like this. multiple of these things like mm -hmm. hooked up, like two of them. 
Isn't that good? You can. I'm sure there are people who do. Because, <laughs> you know, then you control them with, like, your toes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't oh, know yeah. about the toes, but uh, I wouldn't be surprised if there wasn't someone out there that used, like, swipe for the yeah. on-screen keyboard <laughs> with just the touch. Pedro uh, Mateus, like do a not question pads. the dexterity of my toes. No. <laughs> <Aww. laughs> Well, once upon a time, I hooked up a hundred uh, mice and touchpads to one computer just to see what would happen, and they all worked. <laughs> it's the beauty of USB. Hey, man, we all need to practice counting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, I approve of the GUIs. More GUIs for basic functionality, please. Thank you. <laughs> GUI bad. Yes. Rawr. Awesome. Um, <laughs> speaking of something that absolutely positively does not have a GUI is CC cache. Well, just Ccache, whatever you want to call mm. it. And, you know, I assumed everybody knew about this. So apologies if you haven't heard about this. I just wanted to give this a quick mention because I told somebody about it Friday. They were asking me like, hey, man, how quick, you know, you have a thread wrapper and it's kernel compile time. I'm like, it doesn't matter. You don't need a thread wrapper because I have to build a lot of kernels, have to choose to, to play around with some audio bits and bobs and stuff like that. And I like to save a lot of time. And if you're doing that at home, I told this person about it. It came back like, you're a wizard, Harry. I'm like, no, I'm not. But this will mm-hmm. radically increase your compile times. Basically, anything that's going to support GCC, you know, claying anything like that. Uh, your initial build for any project that you're building on a regular basis, that initial build is going to take a minute like it normally does. But after that, it's only going to take care of the parts that have changed effectively. And as long as you don't get crazy with like your cache size, you're good to go. I just wanted to give that project a quick mention. If you're stuck, like doing the same thing over and over and over, because you, you're talking like nice. a 90% reduction, like, all right, we're done. Wow. Also works with OBS. Mm-hmm. Ask me how I know. <laughs> <laughs> nice, man. Yeah, I knew about it, but never used it. And so, but now I am for sure. That's awesome. <laughs> Compile and player a lot faster. <laughs> uh, Real engine. Use yeah. that to build LibreOffice. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> or, or if you had like a running build of Chromium, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, man. I don't know if it supports yeah. Chromium, but yeah, <laughs> I would. I would try it. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think um, Adore with its wife build system supports it. Barely supports itself, man. So um, it, it won't hurt anything to give it a try. But uh, KDE, so I know Pedro is going to be saying something positive about it because it is the superior desktop. That's the one I'm using as for whether or not it's superior. Well, it isn't. But (laughs) I do like KWIN. And this week in KDE, uh, well, we're talking about the upcoming Plasma 521 beta. And uh, Nate, a.k.a. uh, Pointiest Stick, as a bit of an update for us. And yeah, uh, is saying that pl- uh, Plasma 521 is almost here. And now uh, if you open a, you can actually open a folder as a project in Kate. And to me, that isn't just welcome as much as it should mean legal action against whoever it was that decided to not have it there right from the get go. Because why wouldn't you It's like right click, open the folder as a project or go to project can open ask folder. Can question, Pedro and Jill? <laughs> hmm? Yeah. Is it just me or the formatting on this page is just oh really? yeah it's a little funky. <laughs> and that's and that's a serif font. That that's a personal yeah, choice. No, 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 just uh, deep, like put some bullet points, but I'll show you how to use them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it is. Uh, there's also um, they've also introduced the Wayland equivalent of full screen unredirection, so you can actually just if you say you're playing a game in full screen, you don't have to go through the compositor. You everything just goes directly to the screen. Uh, the using the default theme. This was an interesting bug that they found. Uh, using the default theme no longer causes third party app- applications to crash Aww. or freeze. <laughs> nice. So we just was holding on to Katie. Default theme. Right, come on. Breeze. <laughs> <laughs> Breeze, yeah. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, if you're on Intel laptops and your GPU is getting on a bit, because let's face it, Intel GPUs, even the XZs on Linux are kind of questionable right now. Um, it's. Uh, you've probably noticed that it is, KD has been getting progressively choppier. They've addressed that particular issue too, and you know, sardonic as I may be, I am a critic, aka a um, 
butt face on the internet. <laughs> but yeah, uh, these changes, bug fixes, and improvements are very welcome from someone who very much likes Kwin, and yeah. Kwin as a window manager is amazing. It, it's just a compositing mm-hmm. that needs fixing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I use uh, Plasma on my OpenSUSE uh, tumbleweed uh, computer. So I that that's where I do all my testing. And um, what's really awesome in this release is you can finally now mute and unmute the microphone by clicking on the system tray indicator with a left click. Yay! <laughs> that makes life a little easier. Just one of those little annoyances that they they fixed. And you can also do this function with the middle click as well. And nice. <laughs> <laughs> another huge thing, this dro- used to drive me up, up the wall because I'm using often using magnifier programs. Menu items in GTA GTK based apps are are no longer too tall. <laughs> Sometimes it goes off the screen. <laughs> oh boy, and they fix that. So it's you just, could tell just that just by right clicking yeah. on the Steam icon uh, in the tray. It's like, why I do know. I have to scroll? Just yeah. from the, okay, fine. <laughs> yeah. I was just happy that this release fix, fixes lots of uh, paper cuts and bugs. That's what I've noticed from it. It's awesome. Very well. <laughs> Good job. People that are bothered by these things. And uh, I, when you were talking about that, my first thought, I remember when XFC had an, like an issue with like the uh, system little dock tray, you know, for the currently running apps. And like the Steam logo was jacked. It was, <laughs> like if you didn't know that was the Steam thing, you're like, you just, and I, I had the thought of like, that probably should bother me, but it don't. <laughs> there was actually a workaround for that i remember seeing it on reddit uh someone in uh, our unix born uh was asking it's like okay i keep having this issue with the steam icon how do i fix it and someone actually posted the workaround for it. it's like oh okay yeah you just close your eyes <laughs> set solved. the pedal to auto high that's right yeah which i do uh, Pedro, you threw this in because you're like, hey, man, cool. we need to ignite a uh, holy war. Uh-oh. Well, of a sort. Uh, clearly, that holy war has been ignited already because uh, Linux Nuru in Discord posted this earlier on in the week and Hackaday picked it up. You may remember an article called Why You Should Migrate mm-hmm. Everything from Linux to BSD, ri- uh, <laughs> written by the Unix Sheik. And... Well, uh, yeah, Hackaday decided to bring it back up. The article itself, yeah, it's been around for years. It's an interesting read. It's kind of <laughs> very, well, not kind of, it's completely biased, but it is an interesting read. Okay, let's and- tap on the mm-hmm. bullet points real quick. Linux is fragmented. <laughs> mm, yeah, Linux Never is heard being of that one before. heavily influenced by corporate interest. Okay. Uh, yes. BSD <laughs> is the place to be. <laughs> Questionable. <laughs> License yes. problems. Debatable. Okay. Debatable. Yes. Time to migrate everything. Oh, I'm sold. No. 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 <laughs> Basically, no. Uh, no, it is an interesting read. If you've never read it before, I highly suggest you do. It is uh, the. Um, the first hyperlink in the Hackaday article. But the reason I posted the Hackaday article link specifically is because of the comments currently sitting at 118. Excuse the uh, GNU slash Linux copy pasta. There's a lot of that. But there's a few interesting ones. And one of them was the um, someone pointing out that there is an option for search for not system D in uh, DistroWatch. If you just search for <laughs> init systems, cool. one of the options is not system D, so it shows everything else. Oh, oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> one of the other comments that I really love is, I don't know which operating system you run, but I run Emacs. <laughs> How appropriate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Perfect. There, and, was, there was a time when the kernel was small. Well, Emacs was small for that. Uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Long <was>. ago. <laughs> <laughs> and and my reason for not going from Linux to BSD is two words: device drivers. <laughs> Linux doesn't have any drivers for anything. Else. Don't you read Twitter and the internet? Supports a lot more hardware. <laughs> Linux supports a lot more hardware. Although I do love BSD and it, and it has its use cases for sure. <laughs> yeah, I'm with our Theron on that one. Steam. <laughs> Steam. Yeah, Steam. You can do Although, that. I mean, when it yeah. comes down to like, <laughs> yeah. hardware support, 
this this is where Linux shines. I've had to have <laughs> like I've had to talk people back from. I don't have the right word for it. I was talking to a kid about his audio interface. It's like I go to their website and they don't have Linux drivers. It doesn't work. I'm like, no, no, it's an, it's an also the kernels are right there. It's like, no, I'm not going to install hacker drivers. I have you tried <laughs> plugging it in? <laughs> doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It, it will not function until I like again. Example. <sighs> 10 gig fiber dick, hundred percent guarantee you the installation process is going to be like a webcam or an HDMI code under Linux. Click power button. Hey, look, we're done. Yeah. <laughs> so hardware support is something that is definitely fantastic. Now I want everyone's opinion. If you're watching the video version, is this beats or ham? Uh, oh, damn. <laughs> uh, no. that that, uh, <laughs> that could be sausage. like slowly boiled beets. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, or sausages. <laughs> no matter, <laughs> no matter your choice, okay. it's still time for a slice of pie. <laughs> yes, <laughs> yes. And uh, the first bit, I guess we're not uh, shilling for ourselves this week, but that's okay. Uh, the first bit is um, well, hang well, on. you probably. Now that you bring it up. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Curses. Oh, yeah. Ah, my big mouth. Everyone wanted. <laughs> if you do like what we do, but seriously, head over to patreon.com forward slash Linux Gamecast. Get your name in the mm -hmm. credits. We got bonus shows, all the fun stuff we throw your way for being able to support our independent content. You might not like what we say, but you know, we're being honest about it. And uh, yeah, I got some extra things uh, I'm going to be throwing in everyone's direction. Also, if you sub on Twitch. Mm -hmm. You get access to our Discord. People are taking advantage of that, Yay. which is interesting. So there, that's the best part, right, Pedro? <laughs> yeah, start at athleticsgamecast.com. Oh, yeah, we got merch. <laughs> yes. If you want to buy shirts and uh, <laughs> shirts and not shirts are available. Anything else? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> you can get shirts for your face. You can get shirts get for, you know, the lid of your laptop stickers. Mm. Mugs for your toes. <laughs> <laughs> you can what you do with the bug is up to you <laughs> now now can we get into the uh, yes, yes now we can get into the, the big story of the week the, the one that was everywhere as art theron says the slice of salami <laughs> <laughs> no that was clearly not salami uh, yeah. but yeah no this one was very much the big story uh, of the week, which is there's a Microsoft repo installed on Raspberry Pi OS and no one remembers exactly installing it, uh, but it seems to just be there uh, whenever someone runs an apt update and a lot of people started questioning it, rightfully so. I mean, Microsoft does love Linux. Sometimes, um, but <laughs> yeah, no, people's main gripe with this uh, was if you added the repo and say Microsoft added a package with the same name as a one of the core packages that you already had installed, that would be a newer version. So that would install it automatically. And yeah, that without people that being necessarily aware that they were getting mm -hmm. that update from the Microsoft server that could be seen as a little bit shady. It's kind of tinfoil hatty when you consider that the repo in question, which is for uh, Visual Studio, mm -hmm. only has three mm -hmm. packages in it, and it's basic Visual Studio, some of the extras, and some other package, which is effectively just a plugin for uh, Visual Studio code. It's, it's a bit tinfoil hatty, but the way that it was done was a bit shady. Well, it's so. not even, I think, you know, don't, don't yeah. ascribe to malice. What can be ascribed is by the laziness or stupidity. Uh, this is just a communications issue. Like it doesn't matter. Like, ah, I don't want the, uh, Microsoft repo in there. hundred percent. I feel you on that. Also, I'm like, why, why, why are we not using VS Codium as opposed to, you know, the one with all the yeah. telemetry ripped <laughs> off. Um, the big issue here is. Two weeks went by before mm -hmm. the yeah. changes were published. Mm -hmm. So, like, if you just got in front of them, and like, hey, we're adding that, people were like, rare. And life would have went on as opposed to, really? I, I mean, mean, people were okay with Minecraft. 
So just be upfront yeah. about it. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And people don't like finding out about stuff. Like why is there a Microsoft repo <laughs> on my headless <laughs> Pi zero W? I mean, what's, what's going on here? What, that, yeah. Even if it's, Harmless, relatively harmless. Some people are like, ah, oh, it's even worse. Uh, but still, like, really? Because that comes across as, hey, snack. Yeah, yeah, just how much can we sneak in now if this Which went unnoticed for two weeks? I hundred percent do not believe this was the intention of the Raspberry Pi Foundation. Correct. Yeah. Again, Hanlon's razor. They, yeah, they should have just been more transparent a bit sooner and uh, put all the code up earlier than they did. Uh, that's that's all they needed to do, but. It could have just been they didn't get around to it until later. So <laughs> now, it was admittedly, probably another not thing intentional. That didn't help things <laughs> on was when this was initially brought up. Um, the threads about it in the Raspberry Pi forums were locked and deleted. Mm. Not a good look. Nope. You no. don't do that. You can lock mm-hmm. them, but leave them up. <laughs> okay but it's all taken care of uh install debian on your raspberry pi yeah <laughs> easy <fix. laughs> debian shell i don't know is there oh, an arch, too. there's gotta be an arch spin for pi right oh yeah uh yeah yeah mm-hmm. of the many uh arch based distros i think uh doesn't manjaro have one they have one for the yeah um, manjaro has the one pine, so. Monte. yeah, yeah. How, how about the sd <laughs> I haven't looked Someone's into probably that. gotten BSD to run I'm on sure. the pipe, but <laughs> I don't know if it's official. <laughs> yeah, see, now I want to write, a, a write, write the guy back, the BSD guy. They're like, so how do I get it installed? What are you writing mm-hmm. it on? I was like, give me a minute. I'll find something that doesn't run on. Yeah, Mir was saying free BSD runs on the pie, and I do recall oh, that. Okay. All right, good times, yeah. good times. So, Jill... You want to tell us about internet speed and online stuff? Yeah, this was this was an interesting project. You you want to make people have to suffer and realize just how slow their internet is? Yeah, (laughs) no, this is this is actually really cool. This is a net status. It is an always on dashboard web UI to track internet connectivity. And I found actually this especially useful on my phone to analyze my Wi-Fi connectivity because, you know, certain parts of the house, it's not as strong as others. So it was it was nice to uh, analyze that. And what NetStatus does is it will periodically recheck its connection and provide a live view of upload and download speed, latency, ping, or your online or offline status. And it was intended to use with a Raspberry Pi plus a 3.5 LCD display. And um, it is actually really easy to deploy and build on the Pi using Ubuntu 20.04 LTS and a 16 gig SD card or greater. And um, it uses Docker on the back end as well as Libra Speed Internet Speed Test that we have talked about before on the back end. Um, uh, we've talked about before here on LWW. So Jeez. it uses a uh, yeah, that on the back end. So that was really cool. <laughs> Pedro, what are your thoughts on like, hey, man, I don't want to mess with NPM. Uh, what's up? <laughs> <Docker? Yeah. laughs> uh, I think I've made my <laughs> opinions on both of those uh, very clear on previous occasions. <laughs> Uh, no, uh, the U, I'll give it that the UI looks very nice that, Mm -hmm. uh, for just having something like that, uh, Raspberry Pi A plus TD tiny little screen, clear Mm -hmm. information on screen the whole time. That's very nice. Ooh, there was a bit of a leak there. (laughs) 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 But yes, the, um, it's as, as like. Again, for a teeny tiny little embedded thing, single use pie, I like it. That yeah, yeah, that that does look very good. It's and I think it's a, a brilliant it. use. Yeah, I think it's a brilliant <laughs> use of uh, Libra Speed. Honestly, great. <laughs> I I mean, it's AMD sixty four, ARM sixty four, ARM v seven. So PC Pi three, Pi four. Me, I'm just still going to keep reaching back here. Cutting my LCD screen on this built into this router. (laughs) This has also got touch built into it. Yep. Because I'm like that. Yes. (laughs) Not everyone can have the Tower of Power. Some of us need, you know, 
living you, room. <laughs> that's, your, that's why, A, I have the Tower of Power because I can fit everything. B, do you know what the Tower of Power comes with? Power bill. <laughs> that's the power bit i wasn't yeah. thinking that far down that question i no, was thinking no, like no, high no. level that's, he's like oh do you just come in and i do not come in here and just hang out it's costly to cut everything on <laughs> um beautiful people if you want to tell us about your internet speeds how you monitor them or anything yeah. else that would be interesting for us to you know kind of talk about on the show how can they do that you can shout at us because you know social distancing and whatnot but if you don't want to shout on accounts of, mm-hmm. at least here, it's a bit cold, you can go to linuxgamecast.com. You hit the contact button. There's a little form you got to fill. I hit the about a, button? Yeah. Oh, if you hit the about oh, button, boy. you can see some uh, pretty pictures. <laughs> Fairly outdated ones, at least as far as children and myself are I, concerned. I, I updated but. everything uh, on the about page. So that's there. I don't now. even have those glasses anymore. <laughs> Do you know what? Here's the thing. Here's the thing. I have the only, according to the internet, the only high resolution picture of uh, Mon Jordan's Fong doing the pointy thing. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, that's right. Stored on our server because I. <laughs> it was only the thumbnail and that isn't even the original picture because that's the picture I made and blurred the background down. But I updated it about, um, uh, if you want your like Twitch, you know, we have our Twitch channels or Steam channels or Twitter or anything like that. That's there. That's just the thing I wanted to throw out. Now. Ben, I'm no longer the morales are. I'm the morals are. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, uh, if you'd like to send us some feedback for uh, Linux Weekly Daily Wednesdays, just make sure you pick LWDW from the topic box. Otherwise, uh, well, feel free to send some hate mail for LGC Weekly or uh, yes, (laughs) Uh, you can uh, let us know of other pronunciations for moral czar or morale czar. (laughs) But... Until then, um, do we do we get any? Uh, th- oh, we're gonna roll some credits. How about that? Yeah, oh. we gotta thank all our beautiful patrons and our viewers. Which I just totally made the credits right before the show, so they should work. <laughs> Kinda <laughs> missing a space there. Yeah. <laughs> Yay. Do all our beautiful executive producers. LDS Burbrandt, Scott M, and Fox Dog. Oh, didn't didn't do it. Dark <laughs> Yay! Jack, Jack B, B. Renault, Ryder, Justin, Trudgy, Frostclaw, Veritanuda, <laughs> Death Notes. <laughs> uh, oh boy, too many, too small for my All eyes of to the read. <laughs> well, thank you Yay. very much, Daniel and Zero, for uh, yeah. your recent pledges. Y'all rock. <laughs> what are you talking about? They just accidentally Yay. hit the subscribe button. They're like, Dick. <laughs> <Man>. <laughs> thanks. <laughs> we'll see you next week. Bye bye. <laughs>